Thanks for joining our program from Ottawa today, Alex. Hi, Heather. Thanks for having me on this important day. It is an important day, isn't it? And you have an important role in keeping these stories alive. I'm wondering what got you interested in military archives. Yeah, well, today feels very relevant for me. Um, it was, uh, I guess, a boyhood interest in uh, military topics, equipment, um, ships, planes. I mean, I built all the models. Then I went to grad school and I was lucky enough to get a placement at the Canadian War Museum. And uh, from there, I think the die was cast. I worked with the artifacts and uh, talked to, about the stories of, uh, of service personnel through the World Wars. And uh, things just worked out to go over to LAC and become a military archivist responsible for government records, especially from the Department of National Defense. Isn't that fantastic? On a day-to-day -day basis, you get to do your, your to work with what you are passionate about. LAC, for anybody, again, that's Library and Archives Canada. So what do you do in this job on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, it is the best job uh, in government. Um, <laughs> But uh, on a daily basis, I uh, help Canadians access the records. I improve some of our cataloging descriptions. I acquire new records from the Department of National Defense. Um, and I'm part of a, a team of uh, government records archivists here at LAC. Uh, we're all very passionate about acquiring the record of the memory of uh, the government of Canada. So, uh, and sometimes I'm fortunate enough to get to work on uh, large digitization projects to bring those records to Canadians across the country. Okay, pause on that note, because I want to ask about that. It strikes me you're a bit of a treasure hunter. You get to find and, and, and find these, as you said, these incredible things. What's the most interesting or important thing that you have discovered? Well, um, there's been a lot of pretty interesting discoveries over the years. Uh, probably the strangest thing I've ever come across, um, I was on a team that was prepping documents for Second World War soldiers' files for digitization with uh, Ancestry.ca um, and LAC. It was a partnership. And uh, we came across a parachute harness from a paratrooper who landed in France and uh, was killed in action. Um, we came across uh, elements of uniform very occasionally. Um, sometimes there might be a military medal in the file uh, because it could not be issued to a next of kin family member. So they just left it on the file. Um, we at LAC, we conserve all these and protect them just like we protect the, the textual records. Uh, there's I mean, been uh, many, many so interesting, interesting discoveries. But then, years. as you say, you keep them and protect them, and then you also digitize this material so that people can have access. It's that must be monumental uh, a task because there's so much out there. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, we. Uh, so for example, between 2014 and 2018, uh, a digitization team at LAC digitized 623,000 service files of the Canadian Expeditionary Force. It put online something like 30 million documents. Um, we removed, I mean, those documents had to be protected. We removed a mountain of just brass fasteners and staplers that were harming the documents over time. Um, and uh, we had this amazing setup, these bank tech scanners that they look like airport luggage security screening machines that high capacity digitized the records. We had uh, one for the regular records and one for fragile documents with special protections in place. And uh, that team did an amazing job and all those records were placed online um, November 2018 for the centenary of the armistice that ended the First World War. So for people who maybe don't realize this, uh, I mean, for example, I'm going to hold this up. John Northcott, with whom I'm working today, he just gave me this. His, his great uncle was a private in the First World War and he did a search and got like 80 pages of material on his great uncle going back to when he signed up in 1916. So it's it's incredible what people can access. And you've actually helped families, that I, as I understand it, learn more about relatives, right, Alex? Oh, that's right. Um, uh, we're very fortunate to have reference staff that are normally the first uh, point of contact in our service locations across Canada um, that normally are the first contact with the families. 
But um, yeah, we've had uh, we've had requests to, uh, for example, um, we service files have an inaccurate name. The, literally, the military got the name of the person wrong, which in an era when people couldn't read and write and sign their their signature with an X is understandable that their names would be misspelled. But uh, we get contacted by families to correct those uh, those errors. Um, Sometimes families want something corrected in the actual military service file. It's archival practice not to change anything about the document, but we do work to accommodate families. So Who can also go idea. online and learn about their relatives. Now, I have to ask about special projects because you mentioned the one for the centenary that goes back to 2018, 1918 to 2018. What about right now? Anything in particular you're working on? Uh, yeah, I've been very fortunate to work with a, a small team at LAC, including uh, the uh, a private military archivist. That's just the private archive side, uh, Andrew Horrell. Um, and we've been digitizing documents connected with the number two construction battalion, which was the, um, the only all black um, Canadian unit of the Canadian Expeditionary Force. Uh, black Canadians in the First World War signed up, they volunteered, they wanted to serve, they wanted to prove that they were effective combatants. And unfortunately, for the vast majority of them, their service was relegated to a construction battalion. So we wanted to share those stories and make those records available um, online for Canadians. And my colleague, uh, Andrew, also wrote some recent blog pieces about it that provides the links to access those records. Well, I think maybe on this day um, of remembrance, we should spend some time online going to that site for Library and Archives Canada and, and searching through what you continue to assemble. I, I'm actually quite enthralled listening to you talk about the documents and the things that you found, Alex. It, it, it's clear that this has, become, well, this has been for years, but is still quite a passion for you. Why do you think the work of preserving those stories is so important? Well, I think on a day of remembrance, we have to ground our remembrance in the actual lived experience of those uh, soldiers, those sailors, those airmen, those service women um, throughout the history of Canada. And uh, we're very fortunate at LAC to have vaults and vaults and vaults of military records. And so I think it's our responsibility to make those accessible to Canadians so that they can see the raw data of uh, history. They can come up with their own conclusions about that history and uh, military service. And that helps them themselves commemorate that service on Remembrance Day. Well, your service is a valuable one as well. And thank you for telling us about it. Pleasure to have you on the show today, Alex. Thank you so much for having me, Heather. Thanks. Alex Comer from Ottawa.